This is Liberty Under Attack Radio, hosted by Shane and Matt. Your place for documented truth and where freedom is the only agenda. We must end the terror war. And good evening and welcome to another broadcast of Liberty Under Attack Radio. We are live from the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in Delton, Michigan. I'm your host, Shane. I'm happy to be joined by my uh, co-host, Matt, and our special guest host for the evening, uh, Kyle Reardon from the Last Bastille blog. Today is uh, August 9, 2015, and uh, we are happy you are with us this evening. As our regular listeners know, I reside in the communist state of Illinois. I deal with statism, ignorance, and satisfied wage slaves damn near on a daily basis. It was certainly refreshing uh, to come to this festival and uh, be around other like-minded people. And as most of you would expect when it comes to anarchy, it was certainly chaotic. (laughs) On Saturday and Sunday mornings, there were violent, chaotic yoga sessions, destructive daily discussions on freedom and self-sufficiency, and learning better ways to spread our anarchist propaganda. Before I started discussing the events of the festival, there was a certain encounter with the police and police uh, extortionists, unfortunately. So uh, Katie, the uh, girl that came with me, and I were uh, on our way to uh, the hotel in Kalamazoo. We were about uh, an hour out. Um, when uh, this extortionist uh, turned on, turned his uh, lights on and uh, came up behind us. It just so happened that we were listening to uh, Larkin Rose's speech from his uh, book, uh, The Iron Web, um, the, about the 20-minute one um, that discusses anarchy as a whole. Um, so as with last month, I had no idea why I was being pulled over. The officer walked up to uh, the door, and I asked him why I was being pulled over, as, I, as you're supposed to do. And uh, he stated that when I got back into the right-hand lane, I was only seven car lengths ahead of the semi when the state law says it has to be ten. Completely contrary to what I was taught in driver's ed, by the way. So I got my papers uh, got my papers together, and the cop asked me, uh, where are you guys headed tonight? And I responded by saying, I don't have to answer that question. Uh, he wasn't pleased, obviously, and uh, he asked, uh, oh, you're one of those guys, huh? Are you anti-government or just anti-police? And again, I didn't answer the question. He went, back, he went back to his car and uh, wrote me a citation. No court date, won't show up on my record. They just, uh, they just want the money in uh, 10 days. He then stated, you know, I'm not the enemy. I'm from the local county sheriff's office, recognized by the state of Michigan. I'm not the feds. The feds are your enemy. I simply asked, uh, am I free to go? And uh, I was, and uh, we drove off. And uh, obviously I was a little pissed about uh, the arbitrary violation of, uh, uh, <laughs> that I uh, apparently broke on their statutes. So, uh, um, yeah, I handled the uh, blue coat encounter uh, without disclosing my personal information, and uh, at least uh, I only have to pay the extortion fine. I guess I, I did survive the encounter, so it's always a good thing. So we were already off to a good start before we even got to the festival. Um, so we arrived there uh, at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest about 9 a.m. on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, the first discussion was on polyamory, followed by a yoga, uh, in, the, yoga in the grass with uh, Stephanie Murphy, um, freedom farming, and uh, then nonviolent compassionate uh, communication. Uh, for polyamory, uh, the host car broke down on the way, so it was just me and uh, four others having a discussion on this topic. Um, now, I, I didn't partake in the yoga, uh, but I definitely considered it. Uh, lastly, the nonviolent communication was uh, certainly interesting, and uh, Freedom Farming gave me uh, some additional options on how to uh, spread uh, our philosophy with others. Um, next was the Bitcoin Roundtable, and uh, we are going to be joined by uh, uh, one of the gentlemen on the panel in just a moment. And that was probably one of my favorite ones. I learned a lot more about Bitcoin, uh, how, how it works, and uh, all of those good things. And I uh, even got a couple of, a couple of answers to uh, some questions that I had. Unfortunately, I was able, unable to get an answer on the uh, ability to purchase Bitcoin out of their bank accounts, um, other than doing it locally um, from wallet to wallet. Uh, the group photo followed that, and uh, um, Jaman and uh, Carrie Baconic showed their listeners how to go about polycultural farming. It was uh, interesting to see uh, on just 40 acres... Uh, how much food you can potentially grow. Uh, next was uh, Cal Mullen, a Spreading Anarchy uh, workshop, where he explains to the attendees uh, how to go about spreading the true message of freedom uh, to those in their community. And we will be joined by Cal here in just one moment. Um, so that was uh, um, the final event I attended that evening and uh, spent the rest of the night uh, talking to people and uh, enjoying some drinks. Uh, at about 4 a.m., uh, Adam Koch has showed up uh, to the festival to uh, um, do his speech. Uh, Sunday was uh, more of a relaxing day. Well, today was a uh, more of a relaxing day. 
And uh, the only event I went to was uh, Adam Kokesh's. Adam's speech was uh, pretty good, although unfortunately I was unable to, uh, uh, to snag an interview with him. You know, they were on a tight schedule. I think they're heading to Detroit, and they only had a they only had like an hour to be there. So, um, yeah, no interview with Adam, unfortunately. Um, overall, it's uh, it's definitely been a great time, and uh, we'll be looking forward to it next year. I'm definitely going to come next year too. I learned quite a bit and was able to meet other like-minded people. There are a lot of us. Uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of anarchists. Um, it was definitely incredible to see. Um, People of all ages sharing in the message of true freedom. Children, I even saw a few children with anarchist shirts. It was kind of cool, like four and five years old. Um, teenagers and adults of all ages from um, my age all the way up until um, to the older folks. Um, it's definitely given me a more positive outlook on the future um, of, anarch- of anarchism universalized. I was also able to obtain some Bitcoin without a bank account and purchase goods, goods with silver. Uh, definitely a successful weekend. And I have decided to only do about 30 minutes here live because um, I do have a four-hour drive home tonight and I do have to work. So i um, just going to conduct a few interviews here so you can get an idea of the, uh, the type, type of people here. And uh, I guess we will uh, um, we'll go from there. The first one is uh, Mr. Cal Moliné. Um, we've had him live on a couple of times on uh, Liberty Under Attack Radio. Um, so, Guy, how are you doing today? I'm doing as well. Uh, thank you for having me here. Oh, not a problem, not a problem. So uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, um, overall, how do you think uh, the Spreading Anarchy workshop went? Uh, yeah, it went well. Very good receptive crowd, uh, good people. Great to see this gathering here in Michigan, uh, anarchists uh, collaborating, organizing. And it's good to see a lot of the uh, empathy and connection being going here, good networking. Uh, yeah, it's a great response, good audience. And yeah, I look forward to doing this again soon as well. Of course, of course, and I do as well. Um, so are, are you enjoying your time here at MPLC? You kind of already answered that, but I mean, overall, um, overall, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think of uh, Midwest Peace and Liberty Festival? Uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's awesome. I, it would be what a victory party would look like uh, with all these people here. Uh, that's who I would want to celebrate freedom with. And I, I definitely agree. I, it's hard to find uh, um, better people than the people that you'll find at this festival. Um, so next, uh, what has been the highlight of this weekend for you so far? Um, favorite uh, um, events, uh, um, favorite uh, whatever it may be. What was your uh, favorite moment uh, from this event? It was uh, riding in a golf court uh, vehicle in the woods with uh, one of the guys here. And it was awesome. We went up uh, an incline and went down just like Calvin and Hobbes. We almost flew out of control and into the woods. Uh, it was great. Eventually, uh, I got stuck when we went over we couldn't get up a hill so we went backwards and I thought we all had to jump out and, uh, yeah it was amazing it was a roller coaster through the woods that's been awesome uh, and everything else is uh, the people who are making great uh, enriches the experience so yeah man I'm, I'm having a blast here yep and I am as well I am as well um, so I guess uh, that's kind of an interesting question here what do you think is better like a freedom conference or a freedom festival. Um, what I mean by that is uh, um, a conference uh, would be like a New Hampshire Liberty Forum or like Anarchapulco. Um, and obviously, MPLC would be an example of a festival. Um, and also, Anarchon, the one uh, Liberate RVA is hosting here in a couple of weeks. Um, so what do you think is better, freedom conference or a freedom festival? Uh, you could do both. Uh, depends on like, what you're kind of going for for a festival. You, know, you don't really have a conference in the woods. Uh, but it's called Anarchon, you know, so I think it's kind of been synonymous now as a festival. So you have your like Otacon, Ketchikon, Hennycon, right? Uh, and it's uh, more of festivities, celebration. Um, so which I like better depending on what you're tailoring it for. You can still have conferences in winter, for example, when it's too cold to have a festival outside and do multiple things throughout the year. Uh, so I like them both, I would say, uh, in terms of how we tailored and Awesome, awesome. Um, just a couple more questions here, and then I'll let you get back to uh, to uh, um, socializing with uh, the rest of people here at the at the event. Um, so, what do you think is uh, the best strategy for achieving achieving liberty in our lifetime? And I'll hold the mic a little closer to your mouth if you could. Uh, best strategy: uh, working on yourself, uh, liberating your mind, liberating uh, the challenges that uh, that unfold before you, and not let the uh, curveballs uh, hit you and knock you down. Be able to catch those and throw it right back. Um, you know, it's, uh, achieving that economically, financially, uh, your well-being, mentally, uh, you know, you can't, uh, liberate your community if you don't work on yourself first 
And I would say that's the best way to go about it. Uh, anything after that is an added experience and it enriches uh, the community that you start to grow there. And so that from there, in, inwards and then outwards, you know, it's not just a state, the external forces, it's also the internal forces. And I would say they're just as important, but yeah, work knowing thyself <laughs> would be uh, the best way to go about it. Indeed. And I, I definitely agree with, uh, definitely agree with that assessment. I, that's kind of something I've said for a while too, is, uh, uh, you've got to make yourself free uh, mentally and physically before you can start to free others. Uh, so, Callie, definitely want to thank you for taking some time here to uh, talk with me. And uh, good, good to finally meet you. And uh, we'll definitely uh, see you again here soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shane. See you at the victory party, my friend. Not a problem. Have a good one. All right. Uh, and the next person uh, we're going to have on, um, we're going to start talking about Bitcoin and encryption. Um, so the next uh, interviewee is uh, a gentleman named Ben Lopez. All right. All right, so uh, um, like I said, this is Ben Lopez. He was on the uh, Bitcoin Roundtable. Um, he uh, was selling a lot of Bitcoin to people here um, and uh, also just uh, contributing to the good times. So, um, Ben, um, why don't you kind of introduce yourself, uh, let the listeners know how you got involved with Bitcoin, how long you've been involved with it, um, just kind of the basic introductory stuff. Um, well, I, I got involved in Bitcoin uh, probably in about 2011. Um, I, I don't actually recall... Uh, exactly how I first heard about it but um uh I it was interesting to me you know having this currency this kind of like I found I thought of it as like underground and you know it's because it, there's no regulation there was no uh you know bit license wasn't on the table yet or anything like that um so but I, I jumped in kind of quickly um and currently I'm doing um I do uh online trading in the exchanges and um locally I do um person to person uh trades as well so awesome awesome i did uh um i mentioned previously in the introduction that uh, i did purchase some bitcoin it was uh, from this fine gentleman here and it was uh um for uh for the regular listeners you know how much of a struggle it's been for me to acquire bitcoin without having to do with a bank account um so i guess uh, next question how would you how have you enjoyed your uh um enjoyed your time here at the midwest peace and liberty fest oh it's been a amazing experience um i met so many people uh and like you know i i guess the people that aren't of our mindset, they probably think of this festival as, you know, like us running around with our hair on fire and, you know, things like that. I, I think Adam Kokesh made that reference earlier, I think. But, uh, um, yeah, like just like the kindest people you ever meet and like um, just it's pretty amazing. Um, I actually uh, showed up a day late, but uh, I so I caught up on the party a little bit, but uh, uh <laughs> But it, it's been great. I met so many uh, wonderful people, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to next year. Indeed, I, I am too, and uh, I, I do agree with your sentiment there. Um, whenever you are, whenever you're with people that understand uh, um, the non-aggression principle and the uh, the axiom of self-ownership, and they they genuinely care about uh, um, their fellow human beings, it's uh, um, it's definitely like a humbling experience to say the least. Um, so, um, what was your favorite part of MPLC? Uh, like your favorite speaker, um, subject, uh, favorite event? Um, well, the runner up would have to be yoga, which I, uh, got up early for despite being very, very tired. Um, but I mean, I, I got to go with Adam Kokesh. Uh, it was so cool of him to, um, come out here, especially on short notice. And, uh, he was like very patient with people. I know he was, he was kind of in a rush cause, uh, he had to be in Detroit later tonight, but, uh, he was very patient with people. It wasn't rushing anyone. Um, he was just, you know, uh, I, I feel like now that I've been watching a while, I, I feel like there's like a change that's overcome him that he, he seems more humbled now too. And I, I really got that impression. Um, especially a lot that he was talking about with, um, um, the, the approach that you take with people. I know in the past he's been a little more aggressive, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I, his, his new tune, I'm, I'm really digging it. So. Okay. Awesome. 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 Um, so I guess, uh, moving forward. Um, so your, your specialty is Bitcoin, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. All right. Um, so you, you've already kind of uh, um, told the listeners a little about yourself. Um, so it, uh, I can't remember if you mentioned um, what made you take an interest in Bitcoin. Was it like a, did, you, did you come across it on like a 4chan or like some social media site or um, is there anything specifically or was it just kind of a, a multi multitude of things at once? 